Fire. Welcome, students. My name is Roger Hernandez. I'm going to be your instructor for today. Uh, the purpose of today is we're going to learn how to set up these outriggers and deploy the ladder. Uh, I'm going to help you have confidence, and the purpose of this is so you can position the aerial in the advantage position, uh, learn how to stabilize the truck, and also how to reach limits that are unreached. So, to begin this class, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate the steps required to operate the aerial device. Um, so if you follow me, we're going to walk to the front of the truck. So to set out the outriggers, we're going to start by turning on the power. The ignition switch. Once it cycles through all the electronics, we're going to go ahead and turn on the ignition. With the ignition started, there's going to be five things we need to look out for so we can set out the outfit. The first three things would be the aerial PTO, the sends power to the turntable, the aerial master transfers the hydraulics to the turntable generator PTO, which power, to give you extra power, turns on the generator. We're going to have the front wheel lock switch on. It's going to lock all the wheels. So it's going to uh, operate the front uh, brakes to stabilize the front. And then we're also going to put in high idle. What that does is it gives you a higher RPM, so when we move the aerial device, it's going to move in a ready, in a quicker, uh, you're able to navigate a lot quicker. So I'll show up here what it's supposed to look like. So this is the aerial master, aerial PTO, generator PTO, and our front wheel lock. When every press these buttons, they're going to light up. So all these turn red, these are active, and this switch will turn green, which means the lock is now on. And the last step will be the high idle. You can hear the motor, the lock can go up. It's going to help you move the aerial faster. Once you have that all set up, we're going to move to the back of the, of the truck. We're going to visualize your surroundings. So you're going to complete a 360 around the truck. The reason we do that is so we can set up the outriggers. We're not going to hit anything, right? They stick all about five feet, five inches out. So we have them both out. The whole truck will be 19 feet from one end to the other. Each of these levers demonstrate a different outrigger. Here with the little pictures, if you move to the left, for instance, if I move this to the left, now the power, and you move this to the left, up and down, the rear goes down and up. Each switch controls each single one. Uh, you must have a stabilized power on before you operate this. It'll be demonstrated by a green light. So to begin this, I'm going to do one side first. So I know this side is clear. We go ahead and have these extended. I like to drop them a little bit closer to the ground. It saves me time. And on this side, I do the exact same thing. I have plenty of clearance. I have nothing there in the way. There's no manholes. So I'm going to go ahead and set all my other Go ahead and drop my pot, my pads. What that's going to do is it's going to distribute the weight along the pad, and it's, it helps you from breaking the concrete. So you don't know if you have a soft concrete or an edge, it can damage the ground. It can unstabilize the truck whenever you have this elevated. So the pad helps disperse all that weight.
once you have the pads down, I go ahead and I scoot back a couple feet. The reason I do this is so I can get down low. I can see practically all the tires. What I'm going to do is I'm going to transition away from the tires to the outriggers. So I'm going to begin by doing the front first. I'm going to level the outriggers down. Raise it just a bit. And then I'm going to do the, the back two. Where that rear tire comes up, and if I need to adjust the pressure, I'll go ahead. So I'm going to put down those, raise them up a bit. The purpose of this is to transition the tires to the outer. Uh, Signs to tell that the weight is now changed over is clearly you have, you can, uh, there is space between the top of the tire, all the tires, and also the bubble disappears. Whenever you raise this, you can tell the weight coming off the tire. I like to have it elevated because that's a sure sign that none of the tires are touching. Once that's all set up, you have green lights. These green lights represent that the outrigger is now stabilized. Once that's completed, I'm going to look over here. I'm going to level indicators. It's within the green. So you can tell it's about zero degrees because it's completely level from the left and the right. You can operate up to the yellow, but once you get to the red, it's dangerous. So depending on which side you're going to operate on, you're going to have a lean issue there. And the truck may not let you operate on that side if it has an increased angle. Another one is on this side. This measures the front to back. So here we're about negative one degrees. We're still in the green, so we're, still, we're good to go. Y'all want to come up here with me? Whenever we do operate the aerial device, if we have someone in the bucket, the person that turn, there's always should be someone on the turntable. Whoever's in the bucket needs to bring a ladder belt and a helmet. So we open up the box, we have our command zone. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch pages we're going to check your stabilizers on here. So all of our outriggers are green, which means they're all stabilized. So we're going to check for overhead obstructions. We have a pull over there, we should be fine. There's nothing around here. So we're going to go ahead and brace this up. For this skill, we're going to race this up 70 degrees and have it fully extended to 100 feet. We're going to go ahead and race. As you race this, you can also change the speed. You go from fast, normal, and slow. Right now, I have it on fast because there's something in the bucket, and it's a little quicker to have to set up. As you cycle to the pages, they'll tell you how many feet you are from above the ground, the angle you're at. This fails. You can also call it an angle by this little thing that's here. skill so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna retract this and just take note how I retract it and then I lower
to lower it. It has the audio scope feature. And as we get closer to put it at the top of the cab, it's going to correct itself. So the better you are at lining up, the less of a move it's going to do. Since all we do is raise it up, the auto stow will take over, but it may not move. Once the auto stow takes over, it's going to slow down um, the device. You're going to see two brackets, and that's where the, the air device is going to be stowed. Once it's stowed, you're going to navigate to the page that has the PSI. Hold on until it drops, until the PSI increases past the 2000 PSI, and then you can see it's only dropped to 400. So what that's going to tell you is that it's transitioning from one system to the other. So here you can tell it slows down. It's going to alert you on the command zone that the monitor is going. It's going to be a yellow banner on top. Since we keep moving left and right, it doesn't need to make any extra adjustments. PSI is rising, 2,000, now it's dropping, back down below 400. So now they switch system. Once that's all done, close this down, head back to the, down to the ground, and then I start retracting the outrigger. You guys can go ahead and go down to the ground. picked up. Make sure you pull the cables back in. Doors locked. Do a one final 360. Make sure everything's put away. After that, you should be good to go. 